he has an amazing desk at home that's yeah. awesome that we get to run it through in the end. Yeah, a little yeah. PV, yeah, a little four channel PV. A little Mackie. Yeah. <laughs> Not even a Behringer. <laughs> Oh, we're, wait, we're like screwing with their sponsors now. <laughs> what, what fucking sponsor? <laughs> oh, their <laughs> sponsors. Got it. Hey, this is Music Tech. We're here with Dead Mouse and Cascade as K5. Thank you guys for, for being here and for making time for this. The album's out in a month, just over, right? Um, is there anything that this project allows you to sort of flourish as producers that maybe Dead Mouse and Cascade doesn't usually? Yeah, we both get to take 50% off. <laughs> <laughs> it's 50% effort to make 100% of a song. Yeah. That's <laughs> true. One yeah. of us can do heavy lifting on the track, the other one can just fart around. Yeah. Just, uh, or do nothing in some cases. Yeah. And then the other one can just kind of That's, take it off. But. Do you get to like explore new production styles and like s terrains with this project that you? That don't really fit into Dead Mouse and Cascade, or no, I don't. I, no. I use my stuff. I do things my way, just as I always have, especially mm. on this stuff or other things too. And I'm, I'm sure maybe you did the same. It's not like you're like, hey, yeah. I'm gonna change up my production technique just to do this track. No production technique, the same. But I think what's interesting is I think it's a new creative outlet so for me there was experimenting and just like sound design stuff just trying different things that i wouldn't like oh that's not very cascade that's the point yeah <laughs> it's not cascade so uh i think for me it was kind of cool to be able to do that because you can do anything you want and it could be this well that's stylistically thing. right right i just mean like in terms yeah, of as far your as workflow and the way workflow is the same yeah, sure that's what i figured yeah yeah and what's the workflow like? Like you're both pretty, you know, experienced in mixing your tracks and mastering everything. You say one of them does the, like the heavy lifting. Do you just split that or is one of you taking like yeah, mixing Yeah, I, I like and... to take, oh, I guess if anything, I like to kind of reign control over is the mastering. I mean, he has an amazing desk at home that's yeah. awesome that we get to run it through in the end. Yeah, a little yeah. PV, yeah, a little four channel PV. A little Mackie. Yeah. <laughs> Not even a Behringer. <laughs> Oh, we're, wait, we're like screwing with their sponsors now. <laughs> what, what fucking sponsor? <laughs> no, no, wait, go, go oh, their sponsors. <laughs> Got it. No. Dude, I'm spying down. down. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Is there any gear that you both have in your studios that you like kind of want to run? Like, obviously, Joel, you've got the, the Neve desk, which is like a bit of a beauty, but is there anything that you both have that you're like, we should get that in or we should run it through this? Or do you just yeah? Let it flow I felt free? some of the tracks could really use uh, a 303 with the Devilfish mod on it. <laughs> so I, I might have commandeered Ryan's for a little bit. Mm. Is that Which on, is uh, good. It was a nice thing to share. Share <laughs> keywords. He's actually asked for it back recently, so I'm like, I'll bring it to. Mm, just because I have an idea that I want to use it on, <laughs> which will be awesome if I ever get it back. Meanwhile, yeah. I'm like. Using a plug-in. <laughs> was that what you, is that what you used for the Avalanche track, like the heavy three or three focus? One? Um, actually, no, no. But we're fancy. <laughs> but it did turn out sounding good. So yeah. And you said you before that you like send each other tracks and you hit a block and then you 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 get a fresh pair of like ears on that. How helpful is it for you guys to send each other ideas and you know sort of give each other feedback and. Well, we don't, we, we just kind of just set up Dropbox folders full of pretty near complete things uh, and just kind of just say, hey, thumbs up, thumbs down, you know, kind of thing on this and don't really kick the can too mm. hard when it comes to, Ooh, you know, could use some work, but maybe I'll be feeling ah, it's straight to the curb until we get something else in. Yeah, it's like. If I hated something he sent me, I'd just be like, yeah, let's not do that one. But they really <laughs> didn't, you know. Okay, we, then we don't. We kind of focused on stuff that we liked just at that at the start and then refined it over time. Yeah. yeah. Do you still just work like solely remotely? Or like, have you still not got in the studio and work together or are you you're doing more of that now? Well, we were supposed to do that at my house, but we just ended up going wake surfing instead. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, we work in our own little setups and stuff. Ryan's got his production technique and his gear and all that stuff. I mean, you put me in there, I'd just be a fly on the wall saying, oh, cool, that sounds neat, and, and vice versa, you know? So we just work better that way where it's like, hey, here's I mean, the there's, 
let's not discount the importance of wake surfing. No, that's, <laughs> it really <laughs> helped. It really it added really to the sound. It really did happen and it really helped. But also I think like, I, I was saying this earlier, we both have been, we both have our ways that we've been working for mm. a long time that we feel comfortable in. Like why I mess up the flow of that. I think it was easy just to kind of go back and forth. Even though it was cool coming to your house and hanging out, and we did get a little bit of work done, but uh, wake serving was probably the best <laughs> of, the, of that trip. But I mean, I don't. Even if we made some amazing track, I think wake serving still. Would we, we, I, yeah, we, we we did we did spend some time in the same room behind the console, just kind of grazing over what we had and just green lighting this or saying, hey, let's put this on the back burner and work on it more, and that's it. And again, that could be done in like an hour. But it's it's it, that's more like just a show and tell session versus us sitting down going okay, let's come up with an idea, you know. Yeah, you don't do any like sort of hopping on a laptop when you're on tour and stuff and making it. Oh beat hell no, no, I can't. Just I can. in performance mode. Like are you then like off when you're on the road are you just solely focused on the performance or are you still making music? Uh, no, I'm just I guess focused on performance or just playing video games or whatever. <laughs> I, I I need to be in my room, can't work with headphones and laptop speakers. It's just not fun. Yeah, the mobile thing's hard. I mean, I think, I'm sure anyone who's looking at this, it's like, cool. I came up like that, and I'm sure like your first few setups were pretty crappy. Like, it's very like, crappy, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But then, you know, you just get used to being at home and Realizing, real monitors, yeah, yeah. having <laughs> yeah. incense and this and that and the other thing, and that's just kind of that's what makes it fun for me. Uh, fun isn't you know struggling on a laptop monitor trying to find a plugin and you know doing everything in the box and then making maybe possibly even a great song and releasing it and making more money off of that piece of shit than I ever did you know fucking sitting down behind an Eve and you know really applying some of the stuff I've been saving up for for you know 15 years of my life and not really doing anything with it and you're like damn that really hurts but you know, <laughs> like you don't like the good stuff I know <laughs> Yeah. I can't convince them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you guys do finish an idea, like um, I think you both said before that you want to go back and maybe try and like, if you could reproduce some of your old tracks, like <laughs> fax faxing Berlin, right? Um, you That's said that you do things differently. Like what, what would you sort of go back and tell yourself as producers then? Now that you're don't like, sign with a major, <laughs> <laughs> because now I'd be able to do that shit if they wouldn't be able to sit on it for seven to ten years. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, there you go. Don't don't sign with a major label, ever. <laughs> I don't care. Even if it's they give at, you that's easy to dollars. say while we're sitting here. It is, but you know what? Honestly, like if it if it came down to you know, I don't I don't feel that any one major label ever helped me out so much that I could say my career would have went down the shitter if they didn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sure. I agree with that. A little bit of money up front's always nice and stuff like that. But, I needed I mean, the money. I needed spent the money. Really quick. I needed the money. So did I. But you know, maybe there were other means of getting that, <laughs> and still being able to retain my masters. <laughs> you know? Uh, who knows? At the time, I couldn't think of anything else. So I don't know. I needed to You're right. Go. Sometimes you're just so screwed. You got to do it. Yeah. But whatever I would say for an aspiring producer if you can retain as much control as possible because you honestly if you have one, any confidence one, 20 minutes 20 years later you know after you've written you know a track that people still love and play to this day you're like wow it'd be really great if I could just really redo this or reimagine it and then someone's like no you can't actually Joel when we last spoke you'd released OSC pilot um Ryan you come from a DJ background what does the k5 set up look like on stage how are you translating your ideas uh it's just a custom built interface that i did in osc pilot uh using osc par to uh, uh communicate to the the show server right which runs the ableton file more or less so what we have are two control systems one being to either override the other or whatever but they both kind of show feedback of what i'm doing on mine and his on his and then he can interject like by you know triggering loops effects you know um, channel uh, post effects like you know crossfades and delays and um, reverb dumb stuff to keep I, his I think for somebody who didn't come from that world because 
this was new to me performing that way. Um, Joel set it up kind of perfectly. He designed the interface through a C pilot, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and it was for somebody who's comfortable with Ableton. For me, it was. It wasn't like a huge leap. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure I, I had to kind of like Fisher Price it a bit, <laughs> like for like, both Ryan our will sakes. Get this, I yeah, think. just so like you know, here's how it looks, and it's like you know, otherwise it would just be just some blank faders with like one letter as a label. Just for my sake, I know what it is, right. so I can rock. Out but it is that. fun to play on. I mean, it's super fun. It's like uh, I don't know. It's like a very playable version of Ableton to me. Moving on to sort of like the way you release music now like when you released escape as k5 it was a video game accompaniment right <laughs> um and you guys have like sort of dived into i guess web3 a little bit like metaverse joel you've always been pretty connected with fans through like streaming and social media and stuff what do you think is the sort of future of artist to fan connection now that things have changed slightly and okay it's a real big one well <laughs> it's such a convoluted question well the future of what you know what I mean? Music distribution, like the way people consume music, like you're just asking about the future of music in general? Or we're just like, gonna, I'll just go with distribution. What do you think? Like, well, I'm, I'm curious, what do you think about all these, well, like, people well, and all these guys are streaming? Like, really good quote. I don't know if it was Bowie or Zappa or who the fuck was it? Said that music would become like water. You know, it would just be like freely a thing. Right. You know what I mean? Just out there. Yeah. Whatever you want. And, there's some really interesting shit that Google did that they will not open the lid with because of that very fucking reason is that, you know, the Music LM project and all that shit. I don't know if you're aware of that, but look it up. It's pretty scary. Okay. But it's scary in the sense of how stupid music already is anyway. So it's not that frightening. You know what I mean? Right, it's right. like, oh, this thing can make a pop song. Have you heard a pop song? <laughs> like, like, great. Let it go. Yeah. <laughs> Unleash the beast. You know, holy yeah. shit. And would that ever open up the niche market for actual musicianship? Um, uh, you know, things like that are, are soon approaching and fast. Uh, just like chat GPT is starting to have a lot of like, you know, ethical mm. issues between people using them for, you know, accredited, you know, what should be original human thought in like say an essay or an application or a screenplay or something like that because i don't know if you played with like chat gpt and shit like that this shit's pretty good it's good but it's only as good as what it knows you know it's 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 it's, it's, it's a huge training model right so right. you take the collective stupidity of the world and you make a <laughs> robot fucking barf it out it's not going to be that genius but it's going to get you what you want but in, this holds true with pop music. You feed this thing all this pop music, it's like it's just going to stick out more crap. And sure. More crap. And like you said, it opens a lane for stuff that's, you know, on real creativity. There are some AI-assisted plugins that are, like, available and stuff. I don't oh, know there how. have been for years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some really cool ones, actually. There was a really good uh, sample browser that connected to a uh, NLP that did some interesting categorization of samples, like it knew what a snare drum was and it okay. knew what a kick was and all that stuff. And it just took all these like billions of samples and just kind of pulled them together so you could like surf through them like that. That's that cool. kind of cool. I'd love that. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's wrap it up there and call it a day. Thanks guys. All right. All right.